cybersecurity engineer, Colorado Springs, Colorado. So this is a job, a local job, not remote, specifically for a place called Colorado Springs, Colorado. Got a lot of cybersecurity jobs there. A lot, there's like five bases in that in that one small area. So there's always a lot of um, DoD type jobs there. There's other other parts of the federal government as well. So there's also state jobs and county jobs, but there's a, an awful lot of federal jobs there for the Department of Defense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little bit of this job description, what they're looking for who's doing it and then I'm going to give you a link to the description um, and more information on this job contact information things like that if, you, if you're interested okay so this one is actively they contacted me on their phone and I told them hey man just go ahead and e send me your email I already have a job I'm not I'm not interested in in uh, this particular job but I have lots of friends uh, lots of acquaintance acquaintances uh, and a way to broadcast this out to where somebody might be interested in this job, tell lots of people about it all at once. So here it is. He said, you mentioned having friends that would consider this new opportunity. That's you guys. I reached out to you, uh, I reached out this week because of your professional experience and uh, looks great for a cybersecurity engineer opportunity my client has available for the Missile Defense Agency. Are you looking, are you open to entertaining a brief conversation with more details on the role? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put the contact information below. Uh, they did not put a description of the job, but I can give you an idea of, of this job, and that's what I'm going to do in this, in this, in this uh, segment. They said, this opportunity is local, local to Colorado Springs, Colorado. Our client is looking for someone uh, who, on a six months to hire, meaning, they put you there for six months, they see how you work around everyone, they see if, the, if your skills are up to par with what they need, and then they'll hire you after six months, full time. It'll be a contracting position, transitioning you to a full time position with some company. Uh, we are seeking for a candidate who has recent experience with risk management framework, RMF, or DICAP, holds a active clearance, uh, holds a IAM3 certification, that's CISSP, GSLC, CAP, or CISM. And I'll put their contact information below. But what I want to tell you guys, uh, they didn't send me a full description, which is kind of weird. I would, I would, if it was me, I would have sent everything. But I can tell you exactly what this job entails real quick. Okay, so this is something I've been doing for a really long time. So I, I know a, quite a bit about it. So. A cybersecurity engineer. First off, a little background on the history of it. It used to be called an information assurance engineer, but the Department of Defense and uh, federal government started calling this, adopted the term cyber. I guess to, it's more, it's a more encompassing term. Like it, it covers more ground. Whereas information assurance uh, dealt. Information assurance, uh, I guess, was it's a pretty good term if you ask me. But uh, now it's kind of a legacy term. It's just an, I, honestly, okay, I'm going to just be honest. I don't know why they changed the name. <laughs> I think cyber sounds more cool or something like that. I, I don't know why they changed it. Uh, it seems like cyber covers more ground. It could be like whatever you want it to be, whereas information assurance is a very specific thing. It has to do with uh, making sure that you have your, that the people who own the system have a certain level of confidence in the system, and that deals with security, it deals with backups, that deals with... Um, disaster recovery there's a lot of things that, that encompass that where cyber cyber is is all of that and anything else you want to throw on the on that on that term <laughs> anyway okay so what specifically does a cyber security engineer do they mentioned risk management framework uh, they mentioned uh, die cap they mentioned uh, uh, things like that so it's a lot of documentation it's a lot of coordinating with uh, the decision makers, that's the people who actually own the system. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of meetings. It's uh, it's dealing with uh, people who are, are moving large sums of money around for this or that system or maintaining this or that system. Um, and the the idea behind it is that uh, the government or state, local, federal, or whatever in this case, federal government will have a system 
and that system say uh, is really important because it looks at the climate change right uh, it's, it's scientific data and uh, it's encrypted serious data and they're looking at climate change I'm, I'm that's just an example maybe that's not a appropriate example since people are all hung up over climate change uh, and, and are debating whether or not it's real. Uh, so that's not a good. One. Okay, let's say uh, let's say the system uh, is a, is a, is a system that tracks the movement of certain satellites, and those satellites do some imp important work, whatever that might be, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so they, they it's uh, taken telemetry data and it's taken all kinds of other classified data, and that's why it's local because it's more likely it's classified. Um, so without going into any, any, any details about what that might be doing or whatever, because I really don't know. I've never worked with those people before. I don't, I've never worked with them. Uh, it's, you know, just so you know, I'm not giving anything else out. I'm not getting anything out. Um, anyway, so what do they do? They want to know that that, sy that system is so important that they want to make sure that there's security on the system, meaning it's locked down tight. Uh, it, does it have backups? Is there a disaster recovery? Uh, are, are there stakeholders that are going to take care of the system uh, when you have to change to an alternate site? What, you you got to make sure that the, the system has confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and that's where it all comes down to. Available meaning available to the satellites that are sending and receiving data. Available to users that have to log into the system and get that data. Uh, confidential meaning it's secret. Uh, it, they they can't share that information out with other governments or or, or, or the or the public for whatever reason. Um, and integrity meaning nobody can hijack the data and then manipulate it and send it on its way. Everything that you're doing is for those three things: the protection of those three things. CIA. From a cybersecurity perspective, what they're talking about in this particular job is the documentation piece. Why it's so important is because systems have gotten so, there's so many systems and there's, there's so, it's everywhere, it's everywhere. And this is not just the federal government, this is, this is in, not just the U.S. government, U.K., uh, Russia, China, India, all of them, all of them. Because there's so many people, there's so much data that they have to have multiple servers, multiple clients in a huge environment so you have to have documentation you have to document everything that's put into that environment you have to document all the security controls that are in, that are there you have to document you have to have a, a full baseline meaning you know an in, you have an inventory of every system that's in that environment and so somebody has to maintain that and that's where the cybersecurity engineer comes in is maintaining that documentation tracking all the security features on the system and whenever a th and whenever vulnerabilities change they change daily. Uh, whenever Microsoft uh, releases a new patch, whenever Red Hat Linux releases a new pa patch, the cybersecurity engineer uh, has to work with other teams, and in some cases they do it themselves, they have to work with other people to say, okay, cyber, uh, Microsoft just released this patch. Okay, has this been patched on our, on our 1500 systems, right? And if not, when can we get it done? Okay, it's not done yet, let's do a plan of action and milestone. Um, so there's other things that you can do to actually remediate the system or have a plan to put that together, but you have to document it and then that documentation and coordination has to be done with the system owner. And the system owner is usually like a director or commander or somebody like that. Somebody who um, is a decision maker. This is somebody who's who's often talking to higher ups. They're talking to Congress, they're talking to senators, they're talking to other bases, they're talking to generals, they're talking to uh, Department of Defense, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, Secretary of Defense. They're talking to higher, higher, upper level people. So, um, there, there's a lot of responsibility in their hands. So that's that's the job of a cybersecurity engineer. Um, it's you. The, in this particular case, they're talking about the documentation. They they mentioned risk management frame RMS, which is Risk Management Framework, which is NIST 837. Uh, 837 which is risk management framework and that's important because that's a regulation that tells you exactly how the system should be how, how the system should look and how the methods that you're supposed to use to protect that system and every country uh, has something like this and if they don't they're screwed <laughs> because there's so much data and there's so much stuff going on 
there's so much cyber warfare going on where other countries and other agencies and, and hackers and individual people with their own personal mandates and ideas about how the world should be are trying to infiltrate all these different systems. And um, so you have to have a cybersecurity expert on your team. Otherwise, you know, um, you, you're running the risk of getting hacked. And so in this day and age, you have to have some sort of cybersecurity engineer or, or the equivalent. So that's that. The job's in the description below, and the contact information is in the description below. That's what a cybersecurity engineer is. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. I do read those sometimes um, if it's relevant to what we're talking about here. And uh, if you guys are interested, I have more information about cybersecurity, uh, how to get into it, and how to make six figures, and I also have one about uh, working remotely if you're already in IT. Um, and those courses walk you through how to actually make yourself marketable to get the kind of jobs that I'm getting offered all the time every week. Alright, so that's it guys for this one. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. See you guys later.